Now that we have our, the mache cleaned off the bass, this, that was the extra mache that was just laying on it from the mounting process. We want to get all that off at this time. It'll dry onto the shoal side and be difficult to remove later. We can actually start the finish positioning steps. Now there's a couple ways you can do this. Uh, one way is you can actually put this on a mounting stand and put a large like knitting type needle through the head and through the mouth and pin all the fins out. And that's a fine way to do it. But I'm going to show you a way that's even a little easier and a little faster than that and gives you excellent control over the entire process. We're actually going to be mounting this bass entirely on our workbench. Now, if you needed to move the bass right away after we're done mounting, you would want to mount it on a piece of plywood where you could actually pick it up and move it if you needed the bench space. But today we're going to mount it right on our stainless steel bench. It would be ready to move off of this bench already tomorrow. This piece of tin is used for air ducting. You can get it from those kind of contractors. This is what we're actually going to put underneath the head to help prop the head up. If you don't have this, you can use a piece of uh, heavy duty cardboard and a piece of plastic between the cardboard or even freezer paper. We're going to start off by just sliding this underneath the head, letting it lay flat. I've taken a piece of cardboard and cut it into this rectangular shape. This is what's going to prop up the tail. As you can see, this is double wall thickness cardboard. This is just a piece of freezer paper. This is so that our machine glue mix does not stick to the cardboard. So we're going to slide that right underneath the tail. We're going to start by propping up the head and we're going to use two by fours for that. It's just like a building block system. We're going to start with one to see how it looks. One's looking pretty good, but I think I'm going to put two under there just to get started. Now we need to do the same procedure for the tail. With the tail, you're going to need at least three two by fours to get started. Now we have these things initially put up. We have to position our bass on the tin and on the cardboard and freezer paper. So our junctures are flowing correctly. And it looks like we can actually move the head up a little bit onto the tin. And that's putting the tail more into the correct position here. You can actually push these two by fours for the tail towards the fish and it'll bring that tail out a little bit more. What you want is a nice even flowing tail juncture. Looks like the head is in the proper position here. We do need to prop the tin up a little bit underneath the head. We need to bring it up like this. To do that, use a little bit smaller piece of wood shim, lift it up a little bit, and that brought it, that into the perfect position. So we have a nice curve all with our head. We check our tail again to see where that's at. Everything is looking good. The tail juncture is looking good. It's a little floppy right here. So I'm going to take, again, one of our little pieces of wood shim push it under there a little bit to give it a little bit more stability. And yeah, that's almost perfect. Now, as you can see, when I let the bass go, it tends to want to fall towards me or the belly or gut of the fish is falling towards the bench. And I need to get it in the correct plane so that the head and the tail are not cocked one side or the other way. We want it just even plane. So to do that, I'm going to take a piece of my blue foam. I'm going to cut it like a little wedge. I'm going to go ahead and push that underneath the belly and I can see how I can easily adjust the exact position either way by just putting that under there. And you look at it from a number of different angles and make sure everything is lining up correctly. In this case, it definitely is. So the next step is we need to put some paper towels in the mouth. And what that's going to do is it's going to spread out the esophagus and hold the gills separated. We'll be removing that paper towel already tomorrow, but we just need it in there overnight to hold those in place during the initial drying. I'm going to take about a half of a paper towel, 
wad it up, use my fish skinning knife and push it all the way back to the back of the esophagus. And I make sure everything is lining up correctly. The next step is we need to open the mouth. If you recall, we had talked about mounting this bass with the mouth wide open or fairly wide open. So to do that, we need to jack it open. We're gonna cut our blue styrofoam for that. I'm gonna cut a little bit bigger than I need to start. Piece that looks about like this. Now this is already too big, but I'm gonna size it anyways. You can see it's too big. So we're just gonna cut a little bit more off. We'll try that in there. Now that's getting very close. Then I grab it by the top of the head. And I just bring that head up and into position. The reason I do that at this point, because I can really see if my alignment is correct everywhere on the bass and everything is lining up really good. Again, I'm just checking my tail juncture just to make sure everything is still lining up correctly. It looks like it is. I actually like to come down and bring my head where my hand is and I look at it from this way to make sure that the plane is correct, whereas the head is curving out and following the body. You don't want it drooping this way. You don't want it jacked out into the room too much this way. You don't want it drooping down. You don't want the head jacked up. It should be in an even plane. This is very close. Actually going to do is take a T-pin and I'm going to press that right at the juncture of the top of the head. I'll go right in the foam, back it off a little bit. What that's going to do is help hold our bone structure in the correct spot. What I'm doing with my finger here is I'm just smoothing down that mache that we originally put in at the top of the head to help seat everything and blend everything. I also get at it from this angle just to make sure everything's still looking good. And then I come down where my hand is here with my head and I look again and again everything is lining up nicely. Another thing that's common on largemouth bass is the need for a side jack of the mouth. And remember we just jacked it open this way we need to put a jack in here to open up a little bit more this way. Again, we'll take our blue foam. Okay, we put a small one here for these jaws. Now we're going to put a little bit bigger one up here for these. What we're doing is we are actually separating those maxillary bones away from each other a little bit more. Just makes the bass mouth look a little bit bigger. Again, I'm just spreading out that mache. And again, I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna check my actual tail juncture just to make sure that's still lining up correctly. Sometimes it can get moved around during this process. Check the alignment this way. Everything's looking good. Make sure our plane is correct up here. The head's not jacked too high and it's not coming down too low. And again, we have it correct. And we're going to take some T-pins and we're going to start spreading out a few of the fins. I'm going to start with the pelvic fins. Put it right here between the first two fin rays. Hold on to the fish with my left hand. Push that first T-pin in. Again, it's angled down towards the bench. We're gonna have a slight angle back that gives the fish forward motion. Push this pin between the last two rays and just finish spreading it out, as you can see there. We're gonna do the same with the top fin. These fins should match up when you do this. In other words, you wouldn't want to have one fin that's jacked way far forward and another fin is back. They should be in the same plane. As 
you can look at that again from a lot of different angles just to make sure that they are lining up correctly. This one is. Now we're going to take a T-pin, spiny um, fins of the anal fin. Just to spread those out. Again, I'm taking my thumb, I'm just spreading that mache in right into this uh, fin juncture. I'm just kind of spreading it in and pressing it into place and shaping it. Now we're going to spread out the spiny dorsal. Again, we take a T-pin for that. We go in, pull it all the way forward and just push it into our foam. What's nice about using this blue foam for carving, it's very easy to push our pins into. It means we're not jarring the fish. If you're using a commercial form, it can be a little harder to get those pins pushed in. Okay, now that we have all the, those fins spread out, we're going to get the tail spread out and make sure that's aligned correctly before we do any more finish work on the head. And we check our angles again. Things looking good. So again, we're going to take a T-pin and see the exact position I'm putting this in between the fin rays so it's easy to push into. Same on this side. Let's push into place. I like to stand so I'm looking at it and you can take your hand actually and adjust this cardboard. You don't want to have it jacked too far up or too far down. You want it in the exact plane the fish is already in. You can actually adjust the tilt by just adjusting your 2x4s underneath it a little bit too if you need to. This is something you can actually do after the fish is mounted for the first few hours. If you come back and you want to make a quick little adjustment, it's easy to do that. You check everything, it looks like it's looking really good. So now we need to finish the head. Now we need to work on the head and we're going to be flaring out the gills and the gill covers. To do the back gill covers or the wall side, we're going to use tongue depressors. Just going to cut them down. Make them a little easier to work with. We don't need these smaller pieces. I'm just going to use my hand here to open this up and I'm just going to push these popsicle sticks right between those gill rakers and the gills themselves. I want to make sure that I'm not squishing the gills in anywhere or distorting them. This is just to help flare them out to display them. See how I did that there. Now I need to get a piece of plastic underneath here to display out the back gill cover so it'll match the display we're going to put on the front. To do that, I'm going to use a slightly flexible plastic. This is similar to a plastic you would put on the wall in a kitchen to help protect the wood underneath it. You can see how flexible it is. You don't want it where it's too rigid. I just cut it with a slight lobe to the end of it, or slight curve, so that I'm not going to be bunching up on anything as I'm pushing it in. I'm going to push it all the way through and out the other side. You want to make sure after this is pushed in, you can see it come out the other side, then the gill is completely open. If the gill is not completely open, we can easily adjust for that in a day or two. However, if it stays like that for too long, let's say a week, it would dry and you would not be able to move it. We're going to take our tool. We're actually going to grab on to the end of the gill cover. Take our plastic, we're going to slide it right between the top gill and the gill cover. You don't want to catch any of the gills with this plastic. Okay, now I actually just go around to the other side of the fish, make sure it did come through and it did. So we know we went all the way through. Now I need to actually clip this onto our tin to hold it down. So it actually is displaying correctly underneath. For that, I'm going to use a jumbo paper clip. I'm going to start by clipping it onto the tin. 
pushing that plastic down and just pushing it in. Now at this point, the plastic being somewhat rigid, it's pulling my gill cover unnaturally straight. I want a nice curved gill cover. To do that, I'm going to cut a piece of our blue foam again. It's going to be like a little wedge and we're just going to push it between the plastic and our tin and curve that plastic up into a more natural shape now so that when the gill cover is drying against this plastic, it's going to have the same curve as the plastic. Now we are going to work on the gills on the show side in the gill cover. You can see by lifting it up, all of our gills are already spread out, but we need to put something in between them to keep them looking nice and clean. Again, we're going to go back to our blue foam. We're going to cut three strips, thin strips. That is what we're going to use to go between our gills. We're going to lift up our gill cover, start with the smallest one that goes in the first one. You get a little end of that on there, we'll just get rid of that. We don't want any distortion here. Look really nice and neat. The reason we use foam is because it easily breaks right out after these gills have dried. We put that in the second, and we put that in the third. And if these aren't cut to fit right, you can always take them back out and make sure that they are cut correctly. That's what's nice about foam, it's easy to work with. Now that we have the gills flared out correctly, we need to put a piece of cardboard underneath the front gill cover. What actually works really good for that is your standard cereal box cardboard. We're just gonna cut a shape out of this that mimics the front gill cover. Yep, that looks very good. We're going to take a little bit of freezer paper and cut that out in the exact same position. And this is just so the gill cover does not stick to the cardboard as it's drying. What you'll find with fish is as they dry, everything that does not have freezer paper next to the fish is going to stick to it. This plastic here will not stick, but anything else like our cardboard would, or if this would be just cardboard, it would stick to the fish. Being that it's tin, it'll come right off. You can also staple this on here if you need to. I'm just going to go ahead and push it right under. I'm going to start by just bending it into a slight curve to get started. Just kind of working it into that. So we lift up the gill cover and we push it under. We're going right above our gills. We do not want to catch our gills between the gill cover and our cardboard. They should all stay underneath. Now we have to pin it out so it looks natural. They have a natural curve to their gills, so we want to make sure we put that into it. We're going to start with an eye pin. I'm going to just pull this down so it's all displayed. Push it in. I'm going to go right into my foam form with it so there's stability there. The first piece is in. We'll take another eye pin, move up a little bit, make sure everything is pulled out, push it through, and again, right into our foam form. Now we'll take a T pin and we'll do the same thing. And just keep moving up towards the top that way. And you want to find the areas where you can actually just push it right through the skin into the foam. Okay, now we look straight down on it and we make sure it looks good everywhere. This is looking good. You come down at this angle here and you look in and you make sure that it matches the back gill cover 
and it has a gentle curve to it. And in this particular one, I'm going to take this and just push it a little bit more right there to give it a little bit more curve down. And you check it against your back gill cover. I'm going to take a paper clip and I'm just going to clip this at the very top just to hold that into place. Then you look straight down on it again after you did that. Just make sure everything's lining up correctly and it still is. Now we can move on to the pectoral fin. We're going to cut a piece of cardboard. It's in the basic same shape as our pectoral fin. We need to cut a corresponding piece of freezer paper, the same size as the cardboard. Again, we do this so that when we display the fin out, it does not stick onto just the cardboard. It makes it very easy to take it off. The fins are very delicate on the edges and they will stick to the cardboard and tear right apart once they're dried. We're going to use T-pins to flare the pectoral fin out. I'm just pushing it underneath it, going right between the two fin rays at the very top, displaying it out. Most people want their fins displayed completely out, just like we displayed everything else out on the bass. Most bass mounts are, and most fish mounts in general, are display mounts. You're trying to display everything. When the fish is actually swimming through the water, all these fins may not be out as much as this, but when people get a fish mounted, that's what they want to see. Put another T-pin in here. And we're not pushing into the body underneath here because we're actually touching onto the show side skin. They're just resting right on the top. We can adjust the position of this later. You don't want to have it way out like this and you don't want to have it flopping against the form. Somewhere in between that. Now we need to put something on top of the pectoral fin to stop it from warping as it dries. If we didn't put anything on it, the fin might curl up during the drying process. There's a number of different things you can use for that. This is just some wire screening. This works really good. It allows the fin to dry. You can monitor how the fin is drying underneath it and it can actually be removed after just one day because the air can get right at the fin. You can also use a piece of plastic in, that, in its place if you didn't have this kind of screening. You'd want to remove this after the first day or two and then put screen on. The main thing we're trying to get away from by doing this is fins warping unnaturally. And you'll see why we do that during the finishing process, how important it is to keep the fins straight. As long as we're in this area, we'll talk a little bit about the pelvic fins. As you can see, we have them spread out, but they are going to distort as they dry. So we need to clamp something over those. We're gonna use something similar to this screening material. If you recall, during the carving process, we use the drywall screen for our sanding. We're gonna use that for these fins to help keep them from warping. It works excellent for doing that. I'm just going to take a couple of paper clips and one on the back side, one on the show side. Just clip that into place. We're going to repeat the process for the show side pelvic pin. Because the air can get through here, these fins will be dried out almost overnight. I do like to keep these on until I actually do the finishing process. It helps to protect the fins. You'll find if this bass is laying around your shop without any protection and you just bump the fin a little bit, it'll actually break and it'll be difficult to fix later. So I like to keep something on them or at least get the fin work done as soon as I possibly can. Because we're at a little bit different angle, I'm going to explain this piece of foam again. If you recall, we had cut a wedge piece of foam to help adjust the angle of our bass. If we wouldn't have done that, the angle of the bass would have been too far down towards the workbench. And when we would have actually hung that bass on the wall when it was finished, it would have looked distorted. So this controls that and keeps everything in line until the fish dries. Now that we have the head completed, the pectoral fin and the pelvic fins completed, 
we need to finish off the anal fin, the soft dorsal fin, and the tail. And we're going to do the tail next. As you can see, we had spread it out earlier. The tail juncture itself looks really good. You want a nice flowing tail juncture. You'll want it lumpy here. It should flow slightly down and then up into the actual caudal or tail fin. As you can see here, that's what you want it to look like. But we do need to put a straightener on the tail fin. If we don't do this, the whole tail fin is going to distort unnaturally. We're going to be using the same piece of plastic that we use for the back gill cover. This will need to come off after a day or two and replace with screening to finish out the drying process. But this is going to keep this clamped firm and flat. Let's put it on. We're going to use our big clips. Put one on both sides. Sometimes when we do that, the uh, two by fours underneath it can shift down a little bit. So we just simply go behind them and push them back into place. Every time you do that, you make sure your junctures are still aligning correctly and are nice and smooth. And you look at it from different angles to make sure everything is still in line. You can always adjust more with this too if you need to. Looks like we're pretty good. I'm just going to angle it just a little bit down this way because the tail was a little bit further up. It wasn't in line with the fish. You want to always make sure your fish have good flow from head to tail. There should be no point that are catching your eye and stopping you. That would be if the tail was jacked too far up or the head was drooping down or fin was out of alignment. It should be just one cohesive piece. Now we're going to flare out the anal fin the same way we did the pectoral fin. We're going to cut a piece of cardboard for it and then we're also going to cut a corresponding piece of our freezer paper. We're going to use our eye pins again for this. We're going to put it underneath. Carefully push it through. We don't want to push it through too fast. It's going to shake the fish on us. And we push it right through to the workbench. It actually helps to hold it up. We're going to do the same thing here. Again, we can see how we flirt it all the way out. I'm just going to push that down to the workbench. I see we have a little bubble right here now at the anal fin. And that'll often happen after we have it flared out. I'm just going to take my finger and just push that down. And it's actually mostly just mache, which is nice. We can just simply shape it right back in so it looks natural. If there is a little bit of distortion there after it's completed, we can grind that a little bit out and fix it if we need to, but there's no need to do that. That fin looks nice. You, again, you check it from all different angles to make sure everything is lining up correctly. We'll go ahead and put our straightener on that fin now. When you use screening for that. Okay, now we're going to do our last fin, which is the soft dorsal. Again, we're going to just cut a piece of cardboard, the shape of the fin. I like to curve it in this one corner, this corner that's actually going to be sitting right there. It can make it a little bit easier. Take those ends off. And again, we cut a corresponding piece of our freezer paper. Again, we're going to start with an eye pin. Carefully push it through. We don't jar the fish too much. We're going to grab another eye pin and finish it off. Just spreading it all out. If there's a few splits in the fin like you see here, we're just kind of bringing those together the best we can. 
it's natural for fish to have that, but most people want that fixed. Again, we just push right through to the workbench and we want to make sure that these fins are not drooping down. They want to be exactly in the center of the fish, not too far jacked up, not too far drooped down. And to do that, you look at them head on and you can also come and look at it from this angle, which I'm going to quickly do. And we are good. I'm going to take my finger again and just smooth out this juncture here. Sometimes when you open the fin up like that, you can move around some of the mache we had packed in there. Again, what we're doing is we're rebuilding the muscle detail at the fin rut. And all fish have muscles at their fin ruts and that allows them to control their fin. So we're just rebuilding that. You can see how we have a nice drop in where the dorsal begins here. It curves up slightly, drops in again where the soft dorsal begins, and then curves up again until we get to the start of the caudal peduncle, which is right here. And then it drops and flattens out, and it comes to a point at the end of the caudal peduncle here. And it's similar to on the anal fin, though it does flatten out a little bit more up here at the soft dorsal before it actually hits that meat. So now we're going to put our straightener on that soft dorsal. Again, we're going to use our screen for that. One clip is fine. Fins like these aren't going to distort very easily. If this was, let's say, a spawning salmon, you'd have to put a lot more clips on. Those fins are much more powerful and they definitely want to distort. So the bass itself is basically mounted. We just need to do a quick check to make sure we didn't bump anything when we're working on the other parts of it and make sure everything is in alignment. So again, we're gonna look at it from a lot of different angles. That looks good. Check our pectoral fins and make sure that they are equally distant from each other. You don't want them too close together either. You want them kind of spread out because when a fish is underwater, that's actually helping to stabilize it. So you wouldn't want them just straight like this and you wouldn't want them way out either necessarily, even though they will do that. They should have a nice curve to them. The pectoral fin is good. We can rebuild that juncture if we need to. On the head, you look straight down like this at to make sure everything's level. If there is a little bulge of a bone here or there, it's very easy to fix during the finishing process, and I'll show you how to do that. You can take your fingers and just push any mache back that might be back here so it stays nice and smooth. This time we also are going to look inside the mouth to make sure nothing is shifted. It has a nice open look to it. Also going to look at the back gill cover compared to the front gill cover to make sure they are flared at the correct amount so they match. You don't want to have the back gill cover sucked in more than the front or vice versa. They should be the same. If the back gill cover is slightly in, you can take your eye pin and just carefully pull it out a little bit. Make sure your back mandible here is pulled forward. You don't want that pushed back because the fish is swimming out. So I'm just going to take my finger here and just pull it out a little bit. Then what's nice about this is you can actually walk around to the other side of your workbench and look at it from this angle to see if anything is off. It also doesn't hurt to stand up on a step ladder and look down at a higher perspective. It'll look just like it looks then on the wall. And if you see anything, you can quickly adjust for that. At this point, it looks like the bass is pretty much complete and ready for the drying process. As you can see, we mounted this bass directly on our workbench. In order to move it off, it needs to dry at least overnight. I would let it dry overnight and then in the morning I would put a fan on it. You want to put a fan on it from the head blowing towards the tail. If you go the opposite direction, you're going to pop these scales up as they're drying. Right now the scales themselves are actually seated into our glue mix and they're not going to move. And then that glue mix is on our foam, so it's going to hold everything in place. After you put a fan on a bass like this, it should be dry enough to finish within a week. It doesn't hurt to let them sit two weeks. If you work in a damp area like a basement, it's mandatory to have a fan on the bass as it's drying. That's really going to help speed up the drying process. Also, after about two days, you would want to remove this plastic and replace it with screen. 
If you put a fan on it right away the next day, you can remove it within 24 hours. If you don't, the tail fin itself could rot instead of drying. The same goes for all the other fins. The backing that's on here could actually stay on there for longer as long as there's a screen on the front. Also, after 24 hours, we will take the paper towels out of the mouth. That will let the air get in to dry that. We can adjust the esophagus at that time if we need to, including making sure the gill rakers are lined up correctly and the esophagus is not compressed in in any area. You can also push it and manipulate the esophagus so you have to do less epoxy work in there later, which we will cover during the finishing process. If you recall, we put fast scent Atler mache in the back cheek before we actually even sewed the fish up. And we put our regular mache mix in the front cheek. We did that so that when we put our tin to prop up the back of the head, it doesn't flatten the back cheek unnaturally. That fast set mache held it in that position for us. On the front, we don't have to worry about that. It's drying out in the air. There's nothing pressing against it. That's just one quick tip, and that's how we can actually use this tin without distorting the head in any way. In the next video, we will go over removing the bass from our mounting cardboard and tin. We will also go over doing the final adjustments during the drying process. If you needed to use this workbench today, we could have mounted this bass on a, again on a piece of plywood and then moved it to a new bench. But because we actually did it on our workbench, we're going to just leave it here to dry.